Well, hello everyone. I thought it was time for an update on the Key Bridge rebuild in Baltimore, Maryland. The Governor of Maryland on Tuesday, February 4th, announced key design concepts for the replacement bridge. So I'm going to go through those with you here today. Interestingly though, I had done a video within a week of the collapse. I posted it on April 2nd, 2024, and the collapse uh, from the impact with the Dolly ship uh, occurred on March 26th. 2024. And all the key aspects that I mentioned, what I thought was going to constitute the replacement bridge has come to pass. So we'll go through those details in this video. So let's look at this animation of the old truss bridge and what the replacement looks like in this rendering. Of course, cable stayed bridge design has a lot of advantages. This is what it looks like at night. Different angle here. All right, well, let's go through the key features here. The height above water to the bottom of deck on the old bridge was 185 feet. That's going to increase to 230 feet. Overall bridge length increases by 0.3 miles, which you would expect given the higher bridge deck, you need longer approaches. The distance between the main piers, which is a critical aspect of the new design, goes from 1,200 feet to 1,600 feet. And the total length of all the spans go from 2,600 feet to 3,300 feet. Another key aspect here is the federal shipping channel will increase in width from 700 to 1,000 feet. Now, as I mentioned almost a year ago, I thought the best way to get this bridge replaced as quickly as possible was with a design build mechanism. And Keywood Infrastructure was awarded a $73 million contract last year to do the preliminary design for this bridge, the details for which they just announced. Of course, by now, all the debris associated with the main bridge have been removed. They still have to demo the approaches. And of course, this happened with a dolly going off course over 400 feet, striking a pier and causing a catastrophic collapse of the bridge. But this time, they're going to have significantly better pier protection. Also, with the wider width between piers, piers will be located in much shallower water. So larger ships, if they go off course, would run aground before impacting the piers, which is a very sensible design approach. Now, contrast this with these dinky 25-foot diameter dolphins that were over 400 feet upstream and downstream of the bridge piers. In fact, the dolly never even impacted these upstream dolphins. So I know I've mentioned this book in a few other videos, but it's made quite an impression on me. It's Nassim Talib's Anti-Fragile. And I see a lot of applicability for civil engineering projects, particularly bridge projects. And, you know, Anti-Fragile is something that gets better under stress. For bridge projects, we would hope for at least robustness. So the ability to withstand a shock and not necessarily get better, but not get worse either. And one of the central ideas in this book is that so-called extreme events have a much higher probability of occurrence than most people appreciate or even can conceptualize. And unfortunately, the design approach in terms of assessing risk to bridges uh, is, I think, misguided. You know, shortly after this bridge collapse in Maryland, Johns Hopkins University announced a study which was basically applying risk assessment methodology developed by AASHTO, but for existing bridges. And I think it's not really sensible because it relies on limited data sets and some assumptions that go into it, like how big are the ships? How frequently will they be passing by? What's the likelihood that the ship would go off course? If it went off course and struck the bridge, how likely would it be for catastrophic damage to occur? This has all been formalized in a design approach in this AASHTO publication, American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials, but they only applied this to the design of new projects, not existing projects, which is a serious oversight in my opinion. But again, I think this approach doesn't make sense. I think, you know, going through and trying to come up with a statistical analysis based on things that you have to more or less assume or have limited data sets for, and you have to predict the future to some extent, like how much bigger are ships likely to get in the future? And then they end up with a matrix. So as I mentioned, I don't think that makes sense. I think a more common sense approach is needed. You could assess what would happen if a ship went off course and struck up here. Well, if it'd be catastrophic failure, what do you do to prevent that? Can you... You know, you're not going to increase the span length for an existing bridge, but you could provide much better peer protection. 
You might impose operational constraints in terms of the speed of passing ships, whether they have to have escorts, other measures like warning systems on the bridge itself. You know, this collapse killed six highway workers that were on the deck at the time. The death toll would have been likely far greater had it not been for quick-acting law enforcement that closed the bridge to traffic. Now, this bridge only carried, I say only, 30,000 vehicles a day. There are a lot of key bridges throughout the United States that carry upwards of 100,000 vehicles a day. But early on, Biden announced that the federal government would pay 100% of the replacement cost for the key bridge. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect the, the Congress to support my effort. So I'll continue to follow this story. I think uh, Maryland officials are, are doing a great job uh, getting this project on track. You know, they've got the funding in place. They've got their conceptual design completed. And then they need to award the final design phase and the construction. So they're moving along. They're, ex they're estimating that this bridge will be completed in 2028. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I want to send a shout out to those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's an excellent way to support the channel. Also want to thank the channel members. I've had channel members for over a year in some cases, and I really appreciate their support, as well as those of you who have provided super thanks. So thanks very much, everyone, and please stay tuned for future videos.